हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर पूजा वालिया मान फ्रॉम एस डी आई समालका टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन द मॉड्यूल क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ सर्विसेज फ्रॉम द पेपर सर्विसेज मार्केटिंग आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल यू शुड बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ सर्विसेज एंड सर्विस as a process the service sector can best be characterized by its diversity service organizations range in size from huge international corporations in such fields like airlines banking insurance telecommunications hotel chains and freight transportation to a vast array of locally owned and operated small businesses like restaurant laundries taxis and numerous business services researchers have directed much attention to the development of classification systems for services it is very necessary to classify any industry especially services the classification helps managers understand service the offer the unique delivery process and the common problems and accordingly recognize them and manage them by bringing out a solution such classification schemes help service managers to cross their industry boundaries and gain experience from other service industries which share common problems and have similar characteristics as can be seen from this diagram services can be classified in a number of ways various authors have tried to classify the services on various bases this diagram gives a snapshot of such a classification of services a number of bases can be used to classify the services like market segmentation tangibility factor skill type etc we may quickly enlist such bases as tangibility component skill type involved goals of the business regulatory dimension intensity of labor used consumer contact place and timing customization relationship with customers demand and supply this diagram reflects on the characteristics of services this topic has already been dealt in detail in the previous section so students let's move ahead with categorizing the service processes various authors have classified services on the basis of the processes which in turn are differentiated on numerous factors the various service classifications are discussed in detail in this section firstly the market segment services can be classified on the basis of market segment they are catering to thus we can have services catering to end consumers such as the hair salon and the beauty services coaching classes and car wash services or services catering to organizational consumers such as management consulting repair and maintenance services for machines 
and legal services. The second is the degree of tangibility. Services can be classified into tangible offerings such as food services or dry cleaning and intangible services such as teaching and medical services. Authors have classified services as rental good services such as hotel and lodging services and car rentals also. Owned good services such as laundry, cleaning, repair of various gadgets to name a few which involves repair or improvement of goods owned by the customer and non-good services that cover personal experiences such as legal services, educational services and services including the family and counselling services, job training etc. We move on to categorise the service processes on the basis of skills of the service provider. Services can be provided by highly skilled labour or even unskilled labour. Thus, services can be classified as professional such as health or medical services, engineering, accounting, research, management, etc. Services could also be non-professional services such as laundry, shoe shining, cleaning services, etc. A difference can be drawn on the basis of the goals of the service provider. At times, services are differentiated on the basis of the goals they pursue. That is, whether they are profit-making or non-profit-making organizations. For example, an organization can be a profit-oriented entity such as airlines, hotels or restaurants. There could even be non-profit organizations offering services like the state-owned post and telegraph services or public libraries. A difference can be drawn on the degree of regulation. Services are also classified according to the extent of government regulation on them. Services such as mass transportation systems which include airlines, railways and roadways are highly regulated while some face limited regulations. The hospitality sector faces limited government regulations. And then there are some services that are not regulated at all. For example, the barber and the beauty services, the domestic help services, etc. A distinction can be drawn on the basis of degree of labor intensiveness. Services employees play a vital role in the delivery of services and sometimes are also a part of the service delivery. However, services may vary according to the extent of the labor involved. Thus, there can be equipment-based services on the one hand and people-based services on the other hand. Equipment-based services, as the name suggests, could include completely automated services such as ATMs and vending machines or an offering through a machine with little or unskilled human intervention as in movie theatres, dry cleaning to name a few. They also include services that are operated by skilled professionals such as airlines, BPOs, 
etc. People-based services can again be classified into unskilled like guards and cleaning services and skilled services like printing, appliance repair and catering. There could be even professionals in services like engineering, management consultants, data processing and medical services to name a few. Degree of customer contact can also be used to classify the services. Organizations can be classified on the basis of the contact time between the customers and the services staff. Thus, organizations could be high contact or low contact depending upon the time a customer spends with the service provider. High contact service system like in education and hospitality industry while low contact service is the one in which the contact with the service system ranges from a few minutes to some hours like appliance repair services or postal services. Then comes a basis of place and time. Services can be classified on the basis of place and time of the service delivery. Thus, there can be a service site, a customer site and a service delivery service site. The customer needs to visit the service location to avail the service in a service site service. For example, watching a movie in a theatre. In a customer site service, the services are delivered to the customer like home delivery of food items. In service delivery, the service delivery involves the interaction between the customer and the service provider through a physical channel such as an email as in case of online reservation of airlines or railway tickets. The next is customization. A high degree of customization is when the service process can be adapted to suit the needs of individual customers. Lovelock has also classified services as customized and standardized. A standardized service is where the services to be provided is predetermined and pre-designed. A customer may be offered several options, all of which are predetermined and the customer can make a choice. Then we move on to another basis, relationship with customers. According to Lovelock, the relationship can be formal, informal, ongoing or a membership based one. A formal relationship is exemplified in banks where each transaction is noted. While an informal relationship is the one in which customers are anonymous and the transactions are short-lived as in case of watching a movie. An ongoing relationship is epitomized by services of a barber or in a restaurant where proactive measures need to be taken to enjoy continued patronage of the clients. A membership relationship is one in which the patrons, that is the clients, must apply to become members and their performance is reviewed over time. Sometimes service providers create special membership or frequent user programs to reward the loyal users. For example, the airline companies offer frequent flyer programs 
for the regular customers. Another basis is that of demand and supply. Some service organizations can be classified according to the demand for the service and the ability of the service organization to match up the demand. Thus, the grouping can be categorized as steady, like colleges where there is a steady demand for the services or fluctuating as in the hospitality industry where the demand is not constant over a period of time. Another basis could be facilities, equipment and people. Equipment and facilities and people form the tangible elements of the service delivery. It is important because customers use tangible clues to assess the quality of a service provided. The more intangible a service is, the greater is the need to make it tangible. For example, in a college, the classrooms, the tables and chairs, the overhead projectors and the faculty form a part of the tangible elements. Changes to service provision can be made only with authorization from superiors like in services by news agents and confectioners. Authors like Silvestro group services on the basis of value addition done by the front office or back office staff. According to this parameter, service can be classified into back office and front office. A back office oriented service is the one where proportion of front office staff to total staff is small and a front office oriented service is where proportion of front office staff to the total staff is large. For example, in management consultancy and in hospitality sector, the focus is on front office orientation, whereas in transport service, back office orientation is predominant. Another basis for classification is product and process, where the emphasis is on what the customer buys and process oriented as to where the focus is on, how the service is delivered to the customer. Thus, restaurants and transport service are product focused, whereas hotels are process focused. The diagram shown represents the classification of services on the basis of the tangible and intangible actions and the focus on people and processes. So can we say that service is a process? A service is a process. Why? Because just like a process, it involves the conversion of some input into an output. In services, two broad categories, people and objects, are processed. The nature of service act can be tangible or intangible. From an operational perspective, there could be four broad groups in which the service process could be categorized in. As was shown in the diagram, first is the people processing services, which are directed at people. Possession processing services, which are directed at goods and other physical possession. Mental stimulus processing services, which are directed at people's mind and 
information processing services which are directed at intangible assets let us look at all the four one by one to begin with the people processing services this involves noteworthy action directed towards people in particular the bodies of persons such as haircut surgery here customers must enter the service location where the service providers deliver the service benefits to them sometimes service providers come to the customers along with their tools to provide the desired benefits at locations of customers choice from a managerial point of view if managers think about the process and output in terms of people or objects being processed it helps them to identify the benefits being created and the non financial cost time fear pain and mental and physical effort that customers incurs the second is possession processing services these includes concrete actions to physical goods belonging to customers in this case customers need not be present but objects requiring processing must be present for example lawn mowing warehousing laundry many such activities are costly manufacturing operations and do not always involve a simultaneous production and consumption the manager should note that the output in each instance should be a satisfactory solution to the customer's problems or needs or there must be some tangible enhancement or improvement of the item in question the nature of services needs to be understood depending on the target segment the offering needs to be packaged appropriately the third is the mental stimulus processing services this kind of service focuses on intangible actions directed at the minds of people it includes education news entertainment sports theater etc in such instance customers must be present mentally but could be physically located either in specific services facility or in a remote place connected by broadcast signals or telecommunication linkages this is in sharp contrast to people processing where people must be present physically for example haircut or an air travel as these kinds of services like advertising and consultancy pertain to people minds and have the power to influence the attitudes there is a lot of scope for manipulation hence strong moral standards and cautious oversight is required on the part of service provider the last is the information processing services this describes indistinguishable action directed at the customers belongings or assets in service sectors such as insurance and banking little direct contact is needed with the customer once the request for service has been set in motion the extent of customer involvement is determined more by convention and a personal desire to meet the supplier face to face than by operational needs information is the most intangible form of service output but can be transformed into more enduring tangible forms such as reports books tapes 
to name a few this relationship can also be created and maintained of managing people processing services so what is the importance of the classification system the purpose of the development of classification system for services can be multidimensional hefer compiled a number of reasons in the year 1987 to classify products and services and the advantages thereof classification helps to understand the needs of consumers and their motivation for making purchases this helps a marketer to stay abreast of changes in the needs of the consumers it helps a marketer to understand pre purchase and post purchase buying behavior this provides insights into the consumers approach at evaluating services their sources of information and judgment of a product's absolute and relative performance can be made classification can help the service providers formulate strategies for groups of services such strategies save time and effort and can become the foundation for the marketing mix of the firm classification helps to identify whether services have complements in other industries or businesses and identify strategies for possible adoption it is a benchmark to list the service types or organizations which are felt to fit into the groupings classifying service acts as a checklist of service dimensions possessed by service providers and helps to determine their strategic positioning this further helps to determine the strengths and weaknesses of a particular service that is determine areas of excellence as well as areas that need to be worked upon abolished or reduced it also helps to determine the competitor set this also leads to the determination of the competitor strengths and weaknesses which could enable a marketer to identify strategic gaps that represent growth potential or high risk in this diagram we see the strategic service classification this classification is done in four different quadrants so students let's now summarize what we have learned in this module designing a service product is a complex task that requires an understanding of how the core and supplementary services should be combined sequenced and scheduled to create an offering that meets the needs of target market segments many firms create an array of offerings with various performance attributes and brand each package with a distinctive name however unless each of these sub brands offers and fulfills a meaningful value proposition this strategy is likely to be ineffective from a competitive standpoint in particular creating a distinctive branded service experience for customers requires consistency across all product and service elements and at all stages of the service delivery process classification of services helps to understand the needs of consumers and their motivation for making purchases this helps a marketer to stay abreast of changes in the needs of the consumers thank you